just gotta bring it up on the pewter. Decorating, coloring up, and putting details on these little boogers here. So these are the handles that I use for my mugs. And right now they're all kind of, kind of, you know, dirty and messed up. And that's you know kind of the style of my work. But I want to put a lot of detail onto them that make them extra grungy-ish. Now, you know we. Uh, as always, I can see comments and everything. I can respond to them pretty much right away. So if you do have them, let them rip. These were done in a press mold. Like this. I squish them in and I pop them out. And I get those. I think we did that in the previous lunch time. Now comes the assembly. So the first thing I do is kind of tap them to make sure this connective part is going to be flat. Flat enough for me. Now we're gonna score it so we can stick them together. Yeah, this is a little kind of long scorey tool. So fancy, much eleganto. And uh, I don't go uh, super crazy with this because, well, on the first couple here, we'll we'll take it easy. We're gonna make the first few super simple, just so you get the idea. And then as we go, we're gonna make them grungier and more complex until we get to ludicrous, it's totally crazy, I shouldn't be doing it kind of style stuff. Um, are you not getting any, uh, you're not getting any audio? Um, I think, oh yeah, yeah, there's audio. I can hear it. So it's there, Steve. You might have to uh, go out, come back in. Put the vinegar on there. And because these have set up a little bit, I'm gonna put it on both sides. With it flat against the table, I wanna kinda line them up and squish them together. Now because of the nature of how I made these, they may not line up all the way. And because for the most part, these are supposed to look like crummy, assembled from junk kind of things that uh that look will persist as I do a horrible job in putting these together. <laughs> uh well I'm glad I'll be able to help. No, well, you're welcome, you're welcome. Go in there and smooth out that inside lip and pretty much leave it as is. So this would be a setup for possibly color, or we can leave it. And I think for the first one, we're gonna leave it basic, just like this in terms of color and assembly. We're super grungy, much grossness, but we do need to have something that holds these two sides together. You know, that they, they are still, you know, they still look like they're separated, right? They're separated enough, so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna Make sure that that separation is visible. But to hold the two sides together, I've left little spaces here for additions. And we can do something like this, and we'll use the red clay. Sure, we'll use the red clay. Basically, we're gonna make little rivets. Little rivety looking things. Stuff, which is a red porcelain. Fill up the end of this little tool, which makes a hemisphere. Put just a smidge, just the tiniest bit of vinegar in there. If I put too much and then it doesn't stick. Uh, 
put it on there, push it, twist it, and pop it off. So now I have like a little rivet. And because it's a contrasting color, I really have set myself up to not have to paint this handle. <laughs> Like that. And we'll do the other side. Did I, not, I did not vinegar that. I will look at this one though. I was supposed to be on during lunchtime on Thursdays, but my mother-in-law had a, a vaccine appointment, which I had to, uh, I had to be the one to bring her to. Very fancy. Uh, there we go. So we got one. This is going to end up being a one finger handle on the bugs. Now we're going to kind of go right down the line and make them more complex as we go, right? Because doing them one way is too simple. So we'll take this one. Let's see. It kind of lines up enough-ish. We're going to do this one and the other side not colored at all. We'll do this one. And turquoise! And turquoise! <laughs> And then turquoise. Well, maybe we won't do it in turquoise. You'll do it in pink. Oh, yeah, they do look like a planer. I kind of, they're kind of based off of uh, pillow, pillow bearing blocks. Pillow block, berry, pull, pull, pillow bearing things. Nothing says machinery like pastel pink. Poorly applied pastel pink, mind you, too. Whenever I paint something a funny color and I do it poorly, I don't know if you guys... Shoot, it, had to, it was Peter and the Wolf, right? Is it Peter and the Wolf where the kid paints his grand, grandpa's truck or something? Baby blue and everybody makes fun of him. <laughs> I think it's that. That was like the first, that was the first time as a kid I was like aware of gender roles. So I remember going, I like that freaking blue. That's an awesome blue. I would totally, I totally want to truck that blue color. But he was getting made fun of for it. So we're going to do, we're going to do that. And we'll do this one, kind of the same thing, but we'll do a different color. Gender norms. I'm gonna try the turquoise again. Yeah, physics. You just had to apply the pressure correctly, right? Thank you, physics. Mm. That one smells funny. Now I'm, now I'm thinking about planers. That could be a fun off take on these. And I'm not I'm not coloring the whole thing because painting them all is very uh, predictable, right? Like if if you were to make one, the simple solution would automatically to be paint both sides, right? So I'm trying to like get away from the simplest solutions. So like painting one side, you know, a contrasting color to the other would be pretty pretty common. Well, painting one side, well that's pretty common too. Well, what if I split them this way too? So, cause I haven't done that and it totally isn't intuitive, right? Cutting them an extra time. So let's cut them here, right down the middle. So when they do crack after I've made them, 
it'll be a real pain in the ass bummer. But we gotta do it, right? Can't can't stick with the norms. So let's do then kitty corner. I think kitty corner sounds fun. So we're gonna do this part blue. And we'll do this part blue. The other two parts will do pink. And I think, in terms of our coloring, we will stick away from uh, ones associated with gender. As fun as it is. Let's do one, actually that's one, two, three. We'll do one more for our set with this style. This is really my favorite style of handle right now. I like that really, well, I really, I really, really, I really, really, I really, really, I really, really like the way that they look. They're super extra fancy. And I don't really clean my brushes in between, you know, if the colors are close, because Colors right out of the jar are always a little on the kind of dull, dull side, I guess. So we're going to do this one all red. And uh, we'll do them red and apart so that when we stick them together, maybe we'll put a color slip or underglaze that squirts out from the middly bits. That one aside. We got handles like this. These are similar to the other ones, but not exactly the same. Like they've got a, they've got a similar feel, and that they're two parts, you know, and they they touch like that, but they're cleaner. They're not as mechanical. Uh, we'll do this one red. Oh, I did do, I did do some, like, uh, some Louis, and now I want to do another Louis one. Yeah, we're going to do another Louis one. We're going to do this one. That was a pretty clean one. Oh, we will do it. After I put it together, we're going to red the inside of this handle, right? But we're going to wait till we stick that together. We're going to do one of these. We'll do one of these in blue. So this is just a different one finger handle. We'll have fun with the connections. We're going to do this one a solid one too. Guys are a little on the quiet side today. I'm over here just word derping. Is that a thing? Word derping? It's a thing now. One of these. So these are the handle receiver ones. So these get the leather style handles. We'll do this one in red. You gotta pair it. What what's the parrot's name? Is it a talking parrot? Let's see. So the 
first ones are starting to get dry enough to assemble. So I'm gonna wash my hands and stick those together now. I used to do a show, my wife and I, in Buffalo, and uh, one of the hotels near the uh, show, actually like right at the show, had a parrot named Scooby, and uh, once we met Scooby, that was the only hotel we could stay at when we went back to Buffalo, because uh, my wife would sit with Scooby while I did the show. Likes peppers, huh? I would not have thought a parrot liked peppers. Just like that, I'm gonna score, score this joint up. I'm gonna stick a little underglaze around some of the outside edges. So that when I squish it together, that part squirts out. There will be enough other stuff holding it together. Really, it doesn't need to hold it together that much. Just enough to make it through the firing. Just like that. Scooby didn't know a lot of words. It's a very active parrot. And friendly, you know, like it would whistle and it would come and want to like, like hang out with you. Scooby, I don't think really did words. It was a, it was an African gray. Okay, so that. You see how messy and fingerprinty and all the goop coming out? We're gonna let that dry. I might end up cleaning it up a little bit or leaving it to later for it to really firm up before I go further. We got this one. That one has the other plain side. I think for this one we'll put the red and oop, gotta score it first. We'll put red in the joints. Um, that is a what I call a handle receiver. So I made candles that look like leather. And rather than just having them stick to the side of the mug, I wanted them to kind of feel like they melt, you know, or, you know, meant to be there a little more. So this part would go on and the leather looking part would come out of there and go down. So it like receives, it receives the handle. That was kind of based off of a lawnmower part. All my all my lawn equipment at one point was. Um, where's the other half of this? Oh, that. Oh yeah. Um, we're you know 40, 50 years old, and when you have old lawn equipment, you end up spending a lot of time fixing old lawn equipment. And I became enamored with 19, 1960s um, engineering and you know why they did things and what was the difference between what we do now and why and it was pretty pretty wild stuff that uh that they used to do that we don't do now and it's like why why don't we do it and and uh, in the case of like cub cadet it was they lasted too long like if you make something that lasts for you know my 
garden tractor was a, a 68 and I got rid of it last year so math wise that's like uh, 60 years old or something you know when they last that long you don't resell them and in terms of business now that's a no-no which is crazy you know it's sad that that's you know <laughs> what dictates our planning and uh you know how we build things now but it does unfortunately so because this is already complex enough um i am just going to stick them together i'm not gonna put any seam glue or different color on the insides because i'm just worried about them holding up together to begin with the wrong one? I got the wrong one. Oopsie. Um, oh, I got to plug it in. Sorry about that. I got here late. It's not plugged in. Same thing over and over and over, right? Yep, built-in obsolescence is right. Uh, then I can't see the screen. <laughs> Where'd I put my little my little looter? There it is. You know, it, that is a thing. It's a sad thing. You know, we wonder how much further we could be as a as a as a human if we didn't have built-in obsolescence right if we weren't having to to work to replace the things that should last longer all the all the wasted effort so that people that already have more money than they know what to do with can have more of it right Fun, fun things to think about. You know, it should almost be illegal. <laughs> Warranties, you know. Ten-year warranty, that's not enough. It should be brawn and steel. talking about it with, with pottery stuff you know it's it's common to hear the story you know that I've got I've got a customer that bought a mug and it's broken and they want a replacement and uh you know it, it, I love well I don't love I am entertained by the comments sometimes and that the most prevalent comment to a situation like that is they didn't buy it from Walmart, you know, they wouldn't return it at Walmart and expect it to, to be replaced if they broke it. Why would they expect us to? You know, and I watch those kind of conversations go on and, you know, you got some people that it's just about the money. It's just about selling another mug or not selling it, not losing that, that mug. And it's like, you know, we aren't Walmart. I don't strive to be as good or better than Walmart. You know, like they are not my competition. I'd much rather have somebody really enjoy the work that I have, have another piece. You know, somebody came to me and said, hey, this broke. I'd be like, fine, here, have another one. <laughs> and other people would fight them like, no, I want to see the receipt. It's like, no, <laughs> it's just, just give them another one. Crap. If they're a decent person, They'll be back, they'll buy another one, or they'll probably pay you for the one that you just gave them. That one is kind of neat. I would not have done that if I wasn't on this video, right? 
I wouldn't have pushed it that far. I'd have gone a little safer. I'm not going to put any color in this one because it's all red. We'll end up just scrubbing it off maybe later. There was a post in one of the Facebook groups today about a, oh, what was it? I can picture the, the responses. I don't remember what the original post was about. But, oh, it was about grog trails in the bottom of their mug. And somebody had given the response, well, if they want perfect, or if you want to make perfect, why not just use Tupperware? <laughs> and comments like that just... Ooh man, they tickle my my aggressive bone. I wanna, I wanna like let's take this outside. Let's fight over this. I want to punch you in the face. No, <laughs> it's kind of like that. But I don't really want to punch you in your face. But you know, to think that that's what their idea of perfection is is Tupperware, not you know a clunky, lumpy, handmade, awesome mug. Their perfection, their idea of that is Tupperware, plastic. Like, no, like your, your idea of what perfect is warped. And uh, it's sad that it's warped. Well, that's good and crunchy. That's good. We're gonna leave the outside all good and crunchy. We're gonna smooth out the middle. Dirty fingers. So that one's together, that one's together, that one's together, that one's messy and together. This one needs to go together. Do the color in this one? Okay, we will. What color do we put in it? Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's, that's a different question. What do I do with my broken ones? So there are different ways something can break. For me, um, wood firing generates, you know, what I consider a second quite a bit. You know, there's, there's a, a significant loss rate in wood firing. And uh, I primarily deal with that in uh, two ways. One is something that is failed, but looks all right. And those are the scary ones. Those are the ones I don't want around. So I often will break those or give them away to teachers to use as examples in the classroom. And I'll usually put a big X on the bottom or something to denote that it is definitely a second. There are other things that, you know, some, maybe it just didn't come out looking right or it, uh, you know, it has a little flaw in it that isn't, that makes it not perfect. And my standards are really high for my firsts. They're really, really high. I would say that I my firsts are a lot are are beyond what I should be doing. I should be letting more things go, but I don't. And uh, because of that, I have a lot of like really good seconds, and I end up selling those once a year at a show locally, um, the garage sale, which is pretty much just potters, potters with their seconds. It used to be a bigger thing. Um, there were a couple clay community members locally that would do it at their house. And um, Lauren Ritchie, one of my good friends, she passed away, shoot, probably six years ago. And then uh, we used to do it at her house. And it was rain or shine. It was like middle of, middle of October. So it was usually cold and wet. And uh, we would have things set up kind of the night before or that morning of, you know, just out in the rain. <laughs> it was seemed to always be raining. And uh, people would line up starting at like, you know, I think we would ring the bell at nine and people would be in line at seven. And uh, at eight o'clock, we let people in to her backyard, which was a beautiful garden. Like she's what inspired me to grow the gardens at my house. And, so people would go in her backyard and they were allowed to stand near pieces, but they couldn't, and they could touch them, but they couldn't move them. So you'd have, 
you know, women with their husbands and their kids, they'd go around and they'd, they'd pick out a piece and they'd make their kids stand there and claim it. So if anybody else came near, she, they'd have to like fight them off and be like, no, I've claimed that one, that one's mine. And there, were, there, there, was, a, there was a hair pulling at one point over a bunny rabbit, which, which for all of the artists there was hilarious. And uh, <laughs> but that's, that's where it started. And then we've moved it indoors. I'm gonna wash my hands, okay? After Lauren passed away, we moved it indoors, and you know we've done it, did it a few times there. And then the last couple years, it hasn't happened. Um, last year, because of COVID, and the year before that, we just couldn't get a weekend that was right for everybody. Um, I don't mark them really. My regular seconds, you know, I tell people not to give them as gifts. You know, use them for themselves, and uh, I hope they respond to that. I don't need to mark it as a second. If for some reason it ever did get out and get resold, eh, you know, my my reputation is not based on my worst work. I know that that's one of the common common little little quips that get thrown out there when we talk about selling seconds. But I'm not judged by my worst work that's out there. You know, I'm I'm judged by who I am, what I do in the community, and if somebody wants to judge me on my seconds. Have at it. Go have a ball. But uh, the people that that bought them, that enjoy me and my work, they don't care. They don't care at all. I don't care. <laughs> like, like Jenny said, maybe my firsts are better than, or maybe my seconds are better than some people's firsts. Not that it's a firsty competition or anything, but okay. So this one. I am going to cut a hole. Let's see, I got the right hole cutter here. I do, I do, I do. And I got my, the right screw later. Oh, you're gonna love this, right? So, you know, these being attached, you know, and assembled and stuck together, uh, I want them to have a particular vocabulary involved in them. Something like this. I can cut a hole, right? Because if we have something screwed together, it has to have a hole that goes through. And most of the time, you're not going to have a, a hole that is stopped at the end, unless you're under particular circumstances. And typically, when you don't want it to go all the way through, is exactly when somebody that designs these things put a hole all the way through, like a brake caliper. Why would you put a brake caliper the hole goes all the way through when you know water's going to get in there and rust it? They do it anyways. So I've got this little... This little bat pin screw, which fits just in that hole. So I can thread it all the way through, and that will make it look like this hole is threaded. It's a super detail that, uh, you know, it's hard to see. It's going to take me a long time, and it's absolutely unnecessary, but it's cool. And because this screw is now missing, right? Like that is a hole and the screw that goes in it is no longer in there. We're gonna separate this side just a bit because it's missing. It's missing the thing that's supposed to hold it together. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. It's not. Score marks. I want it to look like metal to metal. Like that. Mm. So good. All right. So we got our little separated part down there. We do want to keep it so it does look like it is rounded here. I think that's a, a pretty important design element for me. <laughs> it looks like a hole. On the other side, we're going to do a partial holectomy here. So the back side will be threaded and it'll look like the screw goes through, just not all the way. Mm -hmm. 
details. Am I, in, I, I keep forgetting to check that I'm, I, I'm even in camera. I am, that's wonderful. So, see, so, I mean, not, again, it's not a super detail, but it's important. And then we're gonna take, and we're gonna use red. And we're gonna put a red end in there. So it looks like there is a red screw. It's partly, you know, through that second piece of metal handle. <laughs> and on this side, we will make a screw. Losing tools. Okay, red screw. There wouldn't be a screw without a, a way to. Oh, so I'm going to put the little screw later on there. There. That's a good one. I'll put that in the done one. And was there another done one? Oh, that's the first done one, huh? All the goochies off to the side. This one will do screws. We'll make it simple. So eventually these will get lustered. Like they're an inset, an inset screw, and on this side, again because we can't have things just go partly through. I'm gonna put a little dent on the back. It's about screw size. Now I'm tempted. I'm tempted to clean all this up, but we're gonna wait. When I do it when it's dry, I can end up getting a lot more interesting detail out of the cleanup. So I'm going to leave that. That one's good. This one is done as well. We don't need any cleanup on that guy. And there's no attachments for this. This one is just, it is what it is. This one. This is, this is one we got to make some decisions on. And I want it to be, you know, an extra fancy one because we've done all this extra stuff to it. We've made it, we've made it fancier. I'm cleaning off the back of some of these so that the middle I make sure is um, cut in a little bit. So that when I do go to press it on, that it doesn't rip apart stuff that I don't want to rip apart. I want to keep it kind of thorough. So we can do we can do squished rivets on this one. Let me get a little bit of a wet clay. A squished rivet is like a, a regular airplane rivet. So that you got two sides and they're you know you put the rivet in really hot and then you take a hammer and an anvil and you kind of and it flattens it out and spreads out and fills up the hole. Which really wouldn't be on something this small. But we will suspend disbelief in the sake of handliness. Just a little bit of vinegar. And that 
Uh, on this side. Just a little bit. Wink. Then we're going to pat. Pat those flat. Like rivets. And in the end, they will likely be lustered in some way to make them shiny and fancy. Red one, we're going to do the same thing too, because red with gold luster looks awesome. We're going to leave these rounded though, because gold luster, when it's shiny and round, mm, so sparkly. Mucho sparkle. Leave them as is, like that. And we got it. This is the last one. This one, I'll end up putting on the rivets when I put it on the mug, because actually will press in those spots to really adhere it to the mug. So we'll put that one back. And this one's got a lot of, a lot of slime in there. We're gonna smooth that around some, get off some of the slime so I don't get it all over my hands. We could put two rivets. We'll do two smaller rivets because why not? Rivet, rivet. I often look at ways to make things more difficult rather than easier. It's it's a flaw, I would say, in some instances. But uh, making things harder ends up taking more time and causing more failure. But it's the added benefit of making it super special. A color like this goes well with like a platinum luster too. I like that one. I've done these in other ways where I've kind of gone all the way around and this just this area is just too thin to really do this do this in a fun fun looking way. The two down there though, that works well. My, uh, my riveting today has gone really well. Normally it doesn't work this well. If you do ever get one of these tools and you're trying to do it like this, you're going to be like, how did, how did he do that? This is just luck today. I'm 
bowling a 300 game here. Look at that. ba -dam. Super cool. So, and that's it, guys. That's the, uh, that's what the goal was today, was to get the handles decorated. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, next week, um, the mug should be ready for handles, I hope. And if not, we'll do the next part of the mug. We got some illustration and painting, to, or not illustration, but some setup and painting to do for those before we put the handles on. So thanks for joining. Appreciate you guys stopping and saying hello. And uh, we'll see you next week. Boop. If I can figure out how to turn it off. Oh no!